This week, we'll introduce Scikit-Learn and try our hand at a simple machine learning exercise with linear regression. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I want to talk a little bit about a hot topic, which is machine learning. And while I'm not going to do an entire machine learning course, I do want to show you some of the basics of scikit-learn and some of the downfalls of interpreting machine learning results incorrectly. So we'll go for a, a week or two on this series, playing with some of the different tools in scikit-learn, looking at scores and metrics, and be guided by what you all want to see more of. So for our first exercise, I pulled about a year's worth of data from my weather station here at my house, and I've read it in using pandas. So I've imported NumPy from scikit-learn's linear model. I've imported linear regression, and pandas is PD like normal. These are the columns of data that are available from my weather station in daily summary form. Of course, it collects a lot more data, but this is the easiest to get output. If we look at the head of that data frame, we can see that it has indeed read in correctly, and most of those values make sense. Really, with any machine learning problem, most of the challenge is how to read the data in and how to QC the data. I'm going to make a quick plot. just to take a look at my data. And our task is going to be looking at high and low temperatures. And given a high temperature, how well can I predict what the low temperature is going to be? Now we could incorporate more and more data into this, but let's start out with just one, what the machine learning folks would call feature or feature vector. Now there's a whole field of feature engineering and feature selection and how to optimize this. There's also lots of caveats that we're not going to get into, especially in this first video, about splitting our data into training, test, and validation data sets. This is going to be just a very, very simple look at how to create an instance of a scikit-learn regressor and how to use that. So let's make our plot. I'm going to make a plot of high temperature and we will color that red. I'm going to make a plot of low temperature and we're going to color that blue. Okay, so this looks like we might expect for a year of temperature data. We've got that nice yearly signal, the sinusoidal wave there. And we've also got a pretty interesting excursion here earlier uh, in the year or late in this data sequence, which was the very cold freeze event we had here. All right. So what we're going to end up doing today is nothing really more complicated than fitting a line, which may not seem very exciting, but we're going to be able to extend that to more parameters and using more complicated models. But doing something that we understand well, like fitting a line, is a good way to get used to the pattern of scikit-learn, which is going to be to manipulate our data, to fit or train our algorithm. Then we're going to look at some very, very basic things that are output from it this week. And then we're going to try it on some data that it's never seen before and see how it does. All right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is create vectors, or it's just the fancy word for arrays, of my features and of my outputs, or what I want the answer to be, or we'll call those the targets. So feature vector and target vector. If you think about a y equals mx plus b type of equation where we're fitting something, our features that we put in are going to be x, and we generally use a capital X for this. I'm going to be very simplistic and just put in the high temperature. Now, if you're familiar with the terminology of things like MATLAB, 
scikit-learn is going to be looking for what we then call a column vector. Basically, it just needs a two-dimensional array. So we're going to get our values from pandas, and then I'm going to reshape using minus one and one, saying take this from just a one-dimensional thing to a two-dimensional array that still only really has one dimension worth of data. For our targets, the targets are indeed just a plain one-dimensional array, low temperature. Now we need to create our regressor. I'm going to use the linear regression class. And often you'll see chaining of these things together like I'm going to do here. I'm going to call dot fit. I pass my features and my targets. And just like that, you've trained your first machine learning algorithm, which was really just fitting a line. We can look at some things like a score. and 85.8% in this case. And we'll go more into scores and metrics. We can look at the coefficients. In this case, there's just one because we are only doing a simple line fits, not multi-dimensional. And we can look at the intercept. So that would be the slope and intercept of our y equals mx plus b line. Now we can't just say, well, how did you do on that data? Because it's seen all of that data before. We need to bring some new data in that we haven't ever looked at. And that's why I held back this month's data and it was not in this fit. Now we're going to read that in as May data frame. I'm going to delimit on white space, and the names are the column names. If you look, we only have a few days worth of data here, so we don't have a lot to work with yet. But let's go ahead and see how we do. The may predicted low, we're going to call our regressor dot the predict method and we're going to give it the May highs. So what does that need to look like? Well, remember, it needs to be a two-dimensional array. So my May highs are going to be our May data frame. High temperature dot values, dot reshape, minus one, one. All right, so we have now done our first predictions from data that our machine learning method has not seen before. From our May data frame, I'm going to plot the high temperature I'm going to plot the low temperature, and I'm going to plot my predicted lows. Let's go ahead and assign some colors. We'll keep the highs in red, the lows in blue, and the predictions in orange. So as you can see, some days they line up quite well or just off by a few degrees. And then other days we miss the mark a little bit here by closer to 15 degrees. But how do we quantify that? And is this even enough data to do this with? Machine learning is hungry for one thing and that's generally more data. So now that you've seen the basic workflow with scikit-learn, which is really actually not that exciting, which is just split your data after you read it, fit that data, and then make predictions from that data, and now we're going to evaluate it, we need to dive a little deeper into each of those steps. How do we select features from our data? How do we split it apart? 
to fit it, well, what algorithm should we be using to fit it? There are a lot of different techniques out there that we can use. And then making our predictions, that's basically the same for all the models. And how do we evaluate success? What's good and what's bad? And how do we not fool ourselves by doing false comparisons or looking at the wrong numbers? So these are some of the questions that we'll try to tackle in coming weeks. I hope that you found this useful and that you're excited to explore Scikit-Learn with me. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.